Rebirth plus Era plus Getting Rich plus Sweet Pet plus Smash plus Shuangwen plus Space Spiritual Spring plus Family Growth and Shortcomings, Summer Muyu, who had been single for more than 30 years, had an average appearance. Her parents passed away early and she stayed under someone else's protection, holding a bad hand. Through relentless efforts, I finally secured the position of chief anchor in the country's most popular live streaming room. At the peak of their career, they were excluded and plotted against by others, and a large number of fans who did not know the truth turned black one after another. After drinking a few bottles of strong liquor, I woke up and was reborn into a strange family in the 1980s. Xia Muyu, who shares the same name and surname, has a face of disaster for the country and the people, but she is a true love brain licking dog, almost killed by her lover and ex husband. Xia Muyu, who has a strong wrist and a decisive personality, immediately retired from her ex-husband and took on the mysterious space of Lin Kwan to tear apart scumbags, step on villains, take college entrance exams, enter the entertainment industry, do public welfare, and embark on the road to wealth. In this life, she also met a man who saw her as his destiny. Is there any hidden meaning behind this young master Yi? He looks like a piece of wood. If you touch further, I won't be polite, said young Master Yi in a low voice with rapid breathing. You're welcome, so what? Xia Muyu teased young Master Ye's last line. Then. MM Yi Ching Feng, you beast. Chapter 1. Everywhere Scaly Wounds. You are listening at novelfull.audio. On a snowy winter night, the summer rain fell on the cow grass pile on the hillside. The scent of blood and mud mixed in the cold wind, like a withered rose blooming crimson on a snowy night. The next day, Xia Muyu woke up with sobs and curses. The air didn't know what was going on, emitting a strong musty smell that made her feel nauseous. After finally opening her eyes, she was scared by a woman with tears and a runny nose. Xiao Yu, you finally woke up. Mom thought she would never see you again. Sun Yonghong excitedly grabbed Xia Muyu's hand, but due to excessive force, Xia Muyu felt a pang of pain. Xia Muyu felt confused about what was happening in front of her. Isn't she on her way home? Just as she was about to open her mouth and ask about the situation, a bloody smell flowed down her throat from the corner of her mouth, and disgusted, she spat out a mouthful of blood. At this moment, a dizziness struck Xia Muyu's brain, and her body instantly felt like an electric shock, with a large amount of unfamiliar information emerging in her mind. The scenes before her flashed like a movie, and Xia Muyu realized that she had been reborn into her now battered body. I'm tired and want to take a break, Xia Muyu said as she looked at the crying woman in front of her. This woman has a yellow and skinny face, and she looks frail and can easily be blown down by a gust of wind, but the concern for the original owner shown in her eyes is real. Good light rain, good rest, mom will go get you something to eat, you wait. Sun Yonghong wiped away her tears and hurried out. Xia Muyu looked at the dimly lit room and sorted out everything that had happened. She remembers being suppressed by the group's directors just as she was awarded the title of first sister in tea video sales and gained over 100 million fans for the group. She claimed to have achieved great success and used online public opinion to maliciously spread negative news about her, resulting in a large number of fans turning black overnight and constant online insults. Due to excessive work pressure, I finally couldn't hold on anymore. After drinking excessively, I woke up in this world. Xia Muyu endured the piercing pain all over her body and looked at the surrounding environment. The dark and damp room only had a small window with a little light shining in, and the floor and walls were covered in soil, making it look damp and cold. A dilapidated table was pitch black, with a broken leg supported by bricks, barely able to withstand collapse. Xia Muyu felt a sharp pain in her back and gently moved her body, causing the bed to creak. Move it again, and the straw under the cotton wool will rustle. Xia Muyu stood up in pain and got out of bed, picked up the mirror on the table, and studied her current appearance. Two curved willow leaf smoke eyebrows, a pair of flowing beautiful eyes, shimmering with a slight light, a slender nose, 
and everything is beautiful. My hair is a bit messy, and in a pathological state, it looks like a weak willow supporting the wind. Xia Muyu was immediately tempted, this is the most anticipated appearance in her previous life. Beautiful country and city. He is on par with the most beautiful celebrity he thinks he is. After becoming a famous anchor in the previous life, Xia Muyu had the privilege of working closely with many celebrities. Originally, looking at the surroundings, Xia Muyu felt a chill in her heart. Even if she was reborn, she couldn't find this broken place. At this moment, looking at my stunning self in the mirror, I felt that things were not that bad either. It is said that children from poor families who are too beautiful are not a good thing. Xia Muyu combed through the memories of the original owner she received. Yesterday was the day when the original owner ran away from home and fled their marriage in search of true love. The original owner's marriage partner was not the person they liked. It's just that his family gave him a high dowry, and the grandmother, aunt, and educated youth Lu Jibing, who were liked by the original owner, forcibly allowed the original owner to be given to others in order to covet these dowries. According to the original owner's memory, the person he was betrothed to was named Hu Daeong, a very obese man in his twenties who was still in the summer rain. There is nothing that attracts Xia Muyu, this person was introduced to the Xia family by Lu Jibing. Lu Jibing is the most handsome among these rural educated youth. Even in the harsh rural environment, Lu Jibing has always maintained an elegant and profound temperament, with a clear and beautiful appearance that was typical of urban talents of that era. The original owner has always fantasized about marrying Lu Jiqing, and he takes good care of him every day. But on the surface, Lu Jibing, who looks like a human, is actually a true gambler in private. Not only did I gamble all the living expenses that my family subsidized me, but I also borrowed a lot of money to gamble. He, who was at a loss, came up with the idea of the original owner who had always been interested in him. Lu Jibing once heard someone say at a casino that Hu Daeong, a truck driver from Hujia village, wanted to marry a wife at a high price. As long as he is young and beautiful enough, has never had a child, he is willing to offer any high dowry. Some people also say that Hu Daeong is a violent maniac. He once killed two wives, but both of them used money to pacify their families. Lu Jibing doesn't care about these things. He just wants to receive the introduction fee given by Hu Daeong as soon as possible, so he deliberately concealed the possibility that Hu Daeong may have killed his wife. So after deceiving the original owner, he conspired with Li Guixiang and Lady Xia to marry the original owner. He deceived the original owner into requiring a large amount of activity funds to return to the city, and his family can no longer afford this money. Ask the original owner for help and promise to bring him into the city as a city resident once he returns smoothly. The original owner was also brainless and easily believed the big cake that Lu Jibing had drawn for her, agreeing to the bad idea given by Lu Jibing. On the night of his wedding, Hu Daeong got drunk and entered the room to showcase his beastly behavior. He used all his usual violent tools on the original owner, with ropes, whips, and hooks comparable to the torture of the Qin dynasty. The original owner only then found out that he had entered the wolf's den, feeling extremely sad. After each battle against Xia Muyu, Hu Daeong would also threaten the original owner not to disclose the incident of being beaten. The original owner has repeatedly approached Lu Jibing to express that he cannot tolerate his current life and wants to elope with Lu Jibing. All were evaded by Lu Jibing due to the untimely timing in countless big cakes. In order to help Lu Jibing return to the city as soon as possible, the original owner needs to continuously meet Lu Jibing's so dot called activity expenses. Money can only be obtained from Hu Daeong, so she has been enduring it by his side, almost every day adding new scars to the original owner's body. Not long after, Lu Jibing was indeed transferred back to the city. The original owner saw hope and waited for Lu Jibing to come and find her every day, taking her to the city to become a city resident. I heard the news of Lu Jibing again not long ago when someone from the village who came back from the market said that they had met Lu Jibing in the county town with a girl pulling red cloth to make clothes in a cloth shop. It was likely that they were going to marry another girl. 
The original owner was completely disillusioned, and she didn't believe that the man who promised her a happy life would marry someone else. She didn't believe that she had endured so much pain for this result. She needs to personally go find Lu Zhibing and ask for clarification. That night, the original owner quietly sneaked out of the room while Hu Daeong was asleep. It is the twelfth month of winter, with a sharp north wind and a pitch black surrounding environment. The original owner ran forward like that, without the guidance of moonlight, he couldn't see the path under his feet clearly. The wind was strong, and the original owner's thin body was walking on the field ridge, with every step exceptionally difficult. The sky started to snow out of time, and the road became increasingly slippery. Walking, the original owner accidentally slid down the mountain slope and rolled into a pile of cattle grass. That night, the original owner had frozen to death in the haystack. Although his current body belonged to the original owner, his soul was already soaked in the rain of summer in this world. Xia Muyu was discovered by the villagers and carried back to the Xia family. As soon as Xia Muyu woke up, someone outside the door shouted, Xia Muyu, did you steal someone last night? Please explain to me clearly. Xia Muyu, you shameless thing. Xia Muyu's head is about to crack as she listens to what's happening outside. Don't hide inside and don't come out. It's not easy to give our family a green hat. Not long ago, the original owner's private meeting with Lu Zhibing was seen by the villagers and told Hu Mu. When Hu Daeong found out, Lu Zhibing had already been transferred back to the city. Hu Daeong then vented his anger on the original owner, who had been beaten for several days and nights and could not get out of bed. Hu Daeong's mother kept swearing and threatening outside the door, and everyone in the village knew that Hu Daeong's mother was a complete shrew. Xia Muyu was calculating in her heart how to get rid of this marriage, and she didn't want to go into the tiger's den again. Xiao Yu was injured and is resting, Sun Yonghong quickly came over from the kitchen to explain. What's hurt? She's just going on a date with a little white face, shameless thing. Hu Mama didn't believe it at all. Hu Daeong also shouted, Don't even see who I am, Hu Daeong. Dare to give me a green hat. I want to kill you, this fickle woman. Hu Daeong angrily kicked the door open and saw Xia Muyu lying in bed, with injuries on her face and head. He took it for granted and reached out to pull at Xia Muyu's blanket. Suddenly, her grandmother and aunt burst in and said, Hu Daeong, you bastard, what did you do to us, Xia Yu, that made her look like this? As he spoke, he hit Hu Daeong with a broom, but Hu Daeong couldn't dodge and was hit with a heavy stick. Damn it, how did you treat Xiao Yu so badly? Grandma cried as she spoke. Xiao Muyu felt inexplicable for a moment. In the memories she had, Xiao Muyu's grandmother and aunt were very indifferent to her and her mother. She did all the dirty and tiring work at home for both of them, but even so, she often didn't give her and her mother enough food to eat. Now, instead of speaking for Xiao Muyu as usual, Xiao Muyu feels very uncomfortable. Hu Daeong glared angrily at old lady Xia, while Hu's mother watched as her son was heartbroken and rushed forward to protect Hu Daeong. Your granddaughter is shameless and seduces men. Now that you're still beating my son, I'll fight with you. Speaking as if going crazy, I wanted to grab Mrs. Xia's face. Old lady Xia couldn't dodge and fell to the ground. Originally, old lady Xia and Li Guixiang wanted to use Xia Muyu's injuries to blackmail the Hu family for medical expenses, so they pretended to be very protective of their granddaughter. Hu Ma said that Xia Muyu was seducing other men, which made her dumbfounded. Do you have any evidence of seducing men? Xia Muyu said coldly. I can actually provide evidence of Hu Daeyong's involvement in other things, Xia Muyu didn't say anything, she wanted to leave some cards behind. As soon as Xia Muyu's grandmother heard about the play, she stopped her movements, cleared her throat, and sat down straight, like an old Buddha. She spoke up and said, Xiao Yu has been spoiled by us since childhood. Don't just let her suffer such a serious injury, it's just a slight scratch on her skin. We all feel heartbroken. Look at the severity of this injury, 
we definitely need to find the best doctor to treat her. Grandma, you're right. I think so too. We need to treat Xiaoyu well. Hu Daeong pretended to be very similar in front of others, fearing that Xiaomuyu would reveal his assault at the Xia family. Li Guixiang once again talked about how difficult it was to raise Xiaomuyu. In fact, those words had already been said when asking for the dowry, and Hu Daeong was about to memorize them. So we need 200 yuan for medical expenses. If you only hurt a little skin, it will cost 200 yuan. Don't bully people too much. Hu Mama was a bit excited. Xiaomuyu said, Grandma is right. You'll have to pay for this medicine. But as for the medical expenses, I feel headaches, lower back pain, stomach pain, and leg pain now. The medical expenses must not be less than 500 yuan. And the nutritional expenses during the treatment period, no matter what, there must be some precious supplements, such as ginseng and deer antler. The minimum cost is 300 yuan. Not only can I not work anymore, but I also have to trouble my family to take care of me. The minimum cost for this lost time is 200, right? If you're sick, there must be some items to express. For pig trotters are not too many, right? 20 pounds of pork ribs and 30 pounds of pork. You see, I still have so much blood flowing. I need to eat at least 10 pounds of brown sugar to make up for it. So let's follow this standard. As soon as the words fell, Xia Muyu's grandmother and aunt were both shocked. Oh my goodness, let's just let their hearts go black. Xia Muyu's heart turned black even after a fall. Upon hearing this, Hu Daeyong's head was about to explode. The sum of this and that amount of money must have been 1,000 yuan plus various items, it would cost at least 1,200 yuan. Just now it was only 200 yuan, but in just a few words, Xiaomiu has turned it into 1,200 yuan. In this year and age, 1,200 yuan is enough to marry two daughters-in-law. If it weren't for Hu Daeyong's admiration for Xiaomiu's beauty and his insistence on marrying her, the lion from the Xia family would not have agreed to a dowry of 1,000 yuan. Hu Mama almost fainted from anger, even though her son was successful and earned more money than the farmers in the village. But the whole family was so neat, and Hu Mama, who was a corrupt person, also opened her eyes. At this moment, she finally remembered something was wrong. Chapter 2 Medical Expenses You are listening at NovelFull.audio Xiaomu, you didn't come back last night. Where did you go? Hu Mama asked. Everyone looked at Xia Muyu together, her family had always known about her and the educated youth Lu Jibing. Grandma and Auntie Xia Muyu were afraid that Xia Muyu would really go on a date with that man, so they hurriedly arrived first and said, Hu Daeong, you don't take good care of your wife yourself and have injured everyone. You still have the face to question Xia Muyu at home. His words are sincere, as if he is protecting the summer rain. Xia Muyu looked innocent and said, I didn't do anything. Hu Daeong snored too loudly, I couldn't sleep, so I got up and walked around. It's too dark, I got lost while walking, and I slipped and fell like this, Xia Muyu said weakly. The mess left by the original owner gives Xia Muyu a headache when she thinks about it. You fell it yourself, it's none of our business. Hu Mama was unhappy. Why is it none of your business? We're already married, and Hu Daeong, as her husband, didn't take good care of us, Xiaoyu. Xiaoyu fell, are you trying to shirk responsibility? Grandma Xiaomuyu is happy to get 1,200 yuan soon, and her voice has increased a bit. Xiaomuyu coughed heavily a few times, as if she was about to cough her lungs out, as if her condition was very serious. That's not enough. The lion's mouth is wide open and it costs 1,200 yuan. I think it just seems serious on the surface, but it can both speak and breathe. No matter how you treat it, it won't cost 1,200 yuan. Hu Mama stared fiercely at Xiaomuyu. Xiaomuyu still said weakly, 
if you think what I said is inappropriate, you can take me directly to the hospital for treatment. I heard that Brother Wang next door got injured while on a military mission last time and was taken to a hospital in the county. Not to mention how much it cost for treatment, it cost 800 yuan just for examination. Later on, the treatment cost several thousand yuan. Fortunately, he is a soldier with a military background, otherwise he might not have enough money to pay for medical expenses even if he took out all his family's belongings. Hu Mama and Hu Dayong's faces turned pale as they had heard this before. Afterwards, they all agreed that the hospital was just a place where people didn't vomit their bones. If Xiaomiu was really taken for treatment, he might not be able to bear it. That's right, we also consider your in-laws, Xiaomiu's aunt quickly answered. Yeah, Xiaoyu has been sensible since childhood, and the treatment fee he mentioned is also reasonable. If we really take Xiaomiu to the hospital for treatment, no matter how much it costs, it will be given to the hospital, but it has nothing to do with them anymore. If it costs 1,200 yuan, it will be different. How could they kindly take the money to treat Xiaomiu? This money must have gone into their pockets. These two people have already been secretly calculating in their hearts how to spend this 1,200 yuan. But our family really can't come up with this money. This wedding event has just been completed for less than two months, and all the money has been spent. The dowry is also given to the highest in several nearby villages, so there's no money left. If it had been one or two thousand yuan earlier, it wouldn't have been a problem for Hu Deong. As his first two wives were abused to death by him, in order to calm things down, he did not pay less for their family ceiling fees, so this money is still a bit difficult for Hu Deong. At first, they all said, don't marry her, don't marry her. If you insist on marrying her, you're just a village girl. The asking price is even more expensive than the female students in the city. It's like being hurt makes you feel like you're worth a lot of money. Hu Mama kept scolding Hu Deong in anger. We won't be able to pay back this money. It's up to your Xia family to decide whether to treat it or not. We don't care. Hu Mama said angrily. Sure, you can ignore it, but China's marriage law stipulates that if a wife falls ill, the husband has the responsibility and obligation to receive treatment. If you don't pay for my treatment, while we are still husband and wife, you can wait for the police to arrest Hu Deong. As Xiaomiu spoke, she shifted her gaze to Sun Yonghong. Mom, go call the village chief over and explain the situation to him later. Let's report to the police together. Speaking of reporting to the police, Huda's brave fists clenched with a clattering sound. Hu Mama was clearly panicked. In that era, people attached great importance to reputation. If they were arrested for this, they would definitely be stabbed in the back by the villagers, and they would not be able to survive in the village in the future. Xiaoyu, do we have something to say? What kind of police report? Can we discuss the medical expenses again? Hu Mama's slightly flattering tone is clearly different from her arrogant and domineering attitude just now. Hu Deong feels that Xiaomiu is a bit different from before. She endured being so hard on her before, and never told her parents that she wouldn't let go after just a fall this time. No. Xiaomiu's tone was firm. Who made Hu Deong and I husband and wife? Xiaomiu deliberately emphasized this sentence. Oh, if it's not a married couple, then there's no need to compensate for medical expenses, right? Hu Mama had a sudden idea and was thinking about this matter. She had already been completely taken into the ditch by Xiaomiu. Then you guys get divorced and give me the dowry back. Let's just forget about this. Speaking of withdrawing the dowry, Xiaomiu's grandmother and aunt were anxious. They had already spent a part of the dowry, so how could they possibly withdraw it again? Since receiving the dowry from Xiaomiu, these days have been very nourishing. Although we can't have meat every meal, it's not a problem to taste meat every now and then. This is much better than the days when I used to eat bran and swallow vegetables. The two families each had their own thoughts, one did not want to pay for medicine, and the other did not want to refund the dowry, 
so they suddenly fell silent. Xiaomuyu saw that the atmosphere had already reached this point, and it was time to express her purpose. Since Mrs. Hu has even said the word, divorce, then don't blame me for being impolite, just leave. But this dowry cannot be refunded. The injury on my body is not in vain. This dowry can be considered as medical expenses. As soon as he spoke, Hu Daeong became anxious and said, Why is it that my wife is gone, and the dowry is also gone? Where can we justify this? Then let the police station speak. Xia Muyu closed her eyes, too lazy to pay attention to his appearance. In that era, people had a weak legal awareness and did not believe that fighting between spouses was a violation of the law. But Hu Daeong had a murder case on his body, and he didn't dare to get involved with the police. In one sentence, Hu Daeong dared not speak up. If you want to divorce, you can divorce. But since we have already held our weddings, we have spent all the money we need. It's impossible for you to keep all the dowry. At least you have to refund us some. Who mama still wants to bargain? Speaking of which, old lady Xia is not willing. How could she still give them a little back? She can't bear to part with a single penny. At the very least, we have to refund half of the money, which is 500 yuan. Madame Xia's face darkened and she immediately began to think of cancelling her divorce. If this cancellation means a refund of 500 yuan, why don't they just take Xia Muyu away? She didn't ask for 1,200 yuan, and even asked her to pay 500 yuan back. Grandma Xia is not happy about it. These days, she eats, drinks, and spends some of it early. You're right, the wedding did cost you some, Xia Muyu responded. Old Lady Xia and Li Guixiang's hearts tightened. Is it difficult for this dead girl to agree to a refund of 500 yuan? That's not possible, I thought to myself, so I grabbed onto my wallet. But just now I calculated the medical expenses quite roughly, why don't we recalculate it again? And the medical expenses are 1,200 yuan, and the dowry is 1,000 yuan. This is already considered a concession for me, I will not calculate it anymore. Oh, by the way, there's another expense that hasn't been included. That's enough, Hu Daeong roared. If the dowry is not refunded, then it's not refunded. If the marriage is cancelled, then it's cancelled. We don't care about the medical expenses either. Hu Daeong was annoyed. This woman seems to have beaten less and beaten less, and dares to negotiate terms with him. When there is a chance to bring her home, let's see if I, Hu Daeong, won't kill her. Daeong, what are you talking about? How could you say you don't want this money and just don't want it? Hu Mama was anxious. Let's go first, we'll calculate this later. Hu Daeong gave Xia Muyu a fierce look, as if he was about to devour her alive. When Hu Daeong and his family left, Sun Yonghong, the mother of Xia Muyu, had a worried expression on her face. From now on, Xia Muyu's married reputation is still unknown, and who else will come to marry her? Xia Muyu saw her mother's thoughts and didn't say much. She was reborn and didn't care about fame. Xia Muyu extended her hand and said, Grandma, give me the dowry money. I need to treat my illness. Madam Xia immediately revealed her true face and said, Don't even think about this money. Sun Yonghong heard that old lady Xia had no intention of taking money and spoke in a pleading tone. Mom, look at how Xiaoyu has been injured like this. You can't refuse to give him any money. Without treatment, I'm afraid Xiaoyu won't be able to hold on for long. As he spoke, he began to cry with heartache. Do you think she can't live like this? You just boil the two eggs in the chicken coop for her to eat later. What kind of doctor do you want to see? You really feel like you have so much wealth. On weekdays, the chickens at home lay eggs. Either Lady Xia ate them herself or gave them to her precious grandson, but it was never her turn to spend the summer soaking in the rain. Mom, why don't you give her some? How could two eggs make up for her serious injury? Besides, Xiaoyu fought for the money herself. 
so what about fighting for it on my own? I've been raising her for so many years, and this money isn't even enough to support her. I deserve it, Xia Lao snorted coldly. Isn't that right? What you eat, drink, wear, and use, which one isn't given by your grandmother? Your grandmother should have this money. Li Guixiang helped out, after all, as soon as the money arrived in Grandma Xia's hands, she comforted her a little, and it would eventually be hers. How can I treat this disease? Xia Muyu was about to be infuriated by this strange family. Thinking of the days that the original owner was living, she felt pity and secretly made up her mind to live a life full of glory. Grandma Xia casually said, why don't your mother go to the mountain to pick some herbs? With your skin injury, just apply herbs. What doctor should I see? I'm about to leave. Stop, Xia Muyu said sternly, are you sure you don't want to return this dowry to me? Seeing Xia Muyu suddenly become so serious, Li Guixiang quickly tried to make a comeback. A family, where are you and me? Your grandmother didn't hold it for our family. Okay, you can take this money if you want. But you may not know what I did last night. If I tell the village what I did last night, not to mention that Hu Daeong will definitely come back and ask for the money. Moreover, in the future, no one in the old Xia family can hold their heads up in the village. Auntie's son, don't even try to get married. Everyone was shocked again. Xia Muyu didn't even want his reputation for the sake of money. You shameless person, don't implicate us if you do something shameless yourself. In that era, fame was more important than anything else. Old lady Xia was so angry that her lips were trembling, and she raised her hand to hit Xia Muyu's face. Xia Mu Yusi was not afraid at all. If the original owner had encountered the situation where old lady Xia wanted to hit someone before, she would have been trembling with fear. Xia Muyu lifted her face and said, You fight, you fight. If you can't kill me today, I'll tell Hu Daeong the truth tomorrow, and you won't get a penny. Old lady Xia became even angrier and trembled all over. The raised arm slowly fell down, and the footsteps softened as he took two steps back, unable to catch his breath. He stumbled onto the chair and sat down. Mom, are you okay? Li Guixiang looked concerned. Mom's okay, it's just that you're angry with this damn girl. You shameless thing, give you five yuan and take it to treat your illness. Xia Lao Tai trembled as she dug out her wallet. Five hundred yuan. What? 500 yuan. Are you crazy? If you dare to ask for 500 yuan, even if I sell you, you won't be worth 500 yuan. Chapter 3 Teacher Shui Doesn't Come You are listening at NovelFull.audio Amidst the incredulous gazes of the crowd, Xia Muyu repeated again. Yes, it's only 500 yuan. You said you can't sell me for 500 yuan even if you sell me, so haven't you sold me for 1,000 yuan? I only need half of the money now. If you don't give it, I will ruin the reputation of our whole family. Don't blame me when the Xia family has no successors. Old Lady Xia almost had to hold back her anger that had just come along. They always feel that today's summer rain is different from before. In the past, Xia Muyu was just a bundle of grass, and her family said she dared not go to two. Today, not only did you talk back every word, but you also dared to ask them for money and threaten them. Are you someone who has died once? Are you really not afraid of anything? Of course, if you give me 500 yuan, you won't be at a loss. Don't you think about it. If I break my condition now and don't receive treatment, I won't have a beautiful face. Where else in the future will a bigwig be willing to pay a high price to marry me? As you all know, with our family's current situation, who is interested in our family? It's because of my beautiful face. Now that I'm injured, if I leave a scar and become ugly, no one will offer high dowries anymore. Your son and grandson will not have the money to marry a wife then. Xia Muyu said, looking at old lady Xia and then at Li Guixiang. Sure enough, 
As soon as these words were spoken, the two of them began to waver, but neither of them took out the money. Xiaomuyu knew that there was basically no problem with the money. The problem lay in the distribution of money between old lady Xia and Li Guixiang, so she gave them a chance to discuss. All right, I'm tired. Think about it carefully. I'll sleep for half an hour first, and when it's time, you can deliver the money. Mom, you can stay with me here. Seeing that old lady Xia and Li Guixiang had gone out, Sun Yonghong, the mother of Xiaomuyu, dared to ask softly. Is it okay for Xiaoyu to do this? Can your grandmother give you the money? Sigh, it's all because mom has no ability. She doesn't have the money to pay for your medical expenses, otherwise she wouldn't let you suffer like this. Mom, don't worry, we can definitely get this money. Xiaomuyu had full confidence. Speaking, Xiaomuyu also looked at her mother's thin figure and waxy yellow skin, feeling very sad in her heart. According to the memory received from the original owner, Xia Ma used to be a child of a wealthy family, living a privileged life. Later, due to policy changes, the family property was confiscated and both parents were imprisoned. In order to survive, he fled to this ten-mile village and let the Xia family find a cheap wife, which will be a challenge for the future. In the previous life, Xia Muyu's parents passed away early and stayed with his uncle and aunt since childhood. Uncle and aunt have their own children, so family affection has always been lacking for Xiaomuyu. In this lifetime, Xiaomuyu wants to be filial to the original owner. Not long after, old lady Xia and Li Guixiang came in again. It seems that you have come up with a plan. I figured it out, you can't go to the dowry for your next wedding. No problem, the next wedding dowry will be yours. Seeing Xiaomuyu's straightforward answer, old lady Xia and Li Guixiang stopped procrastinating and took out 500 yuan, reluctantly handing it to Xiaomuyu. With this money, one can live a good life for a period of time in this era. After receiving the money, Xiaomuyu pondered how to spend it. 500 yuan is quite a lot in this era, but there are few ways to earn money, so you have to save some money. Although one can predict many opportunities based on their understanding of the times through their travels, solving the current issues of food, clothing, housing, and transportation is the most crucial. Xiaomuyu asked her mother son Yonghong to boil some hot water and clean herself up from the dirt. Then let son Yonghong wander around the village with her, attempting to find the so dot called business opportunity. In the cold winter of the twelfth lunar month, there is a lack of connection between green and yellow, and the entire village is desolate and desolate. Occasionally, some dog barks can be heard. In front of the house were a few pitiful small cabbage trees, and behind the house was a bamboo forest, which was quite dense, except for the very slender bamboo. Ah, it looks like there's nothing here. Xiaomuyu was a bit frustrated. At this time of the year, it is the busiest time for rural people. Apart from preparing New Year's goods, there is nothing else to do. Women like to gather together to barbecue and beat sweaters. The men gather together to play cards and brag. Walking to a house in the middle of the village, I heard someone talking about their child's education. What do you say about this? I heard that teacher he won't come next year. It's normal for teacher he not to come. Look at our village being so poor we have to eat or drink. Teacher he is both talented and beautiful, and he is from the city. How could he be willing to suffer in this place? Yeah, my little Yen always comes back after school to say how good teacher he is. This is because my little Yen has learned quite a few words in the past six months. Xiaomuyu has a good impression of what they call teacher he. She remembers that it was still summer when teacher he suddenly appeared to teach at the school in the village. As soon as everyone heard that teacher he was a teacher sent from the city, they all rushed to see the city people. The original owner naturally didn't let go of the excitement and followed them to see. Teacher he did live up to expectations, not only with the scholarly aura of a scholar, but also with the fair skin and upright figure of urban talents. His appearance was comparable to that of a popular male celebrity. The hair is parted slightly in the middle, 
paired with a retro shirt and a straight and loose suit pants, with a style similar to those enchanting Korean-style obus in the modern world. The women in the village looked shy when they saw it, while the men sneered, cut, if I were from the city, I would look so handsome. Just the appearance in her memory had already made Xia Muyu slightly tempted. When she heard that teacher he was not coming, she couldn't help but feel a bit disappointed. She hadn't seen anything real yet. Xia Muyu walked up to ask, Aunt Wang, is teacher he really not coming? It's light rain, come and sit down quickly. Aunt Wang brought two chairs over and invited them to sit down and heat the fire. I heard from the brigade secretary that teacher he has something to do at home and can't leave, so he can't come, said Aunt Wong with a hint of regret. Has the new teacher been appointed yet? No, we're in a remote and impoverished area, and no one wants to come. The village chief went to the town to negotiate, but after several attempts, we couldn't find a teacher. What should the children do? Several parents looked worried. Xiao Muyu feels like an opportunity has arrived. It's good to be a teacher in the village first. She remembered her grandfather, who had been a teacher in the village for a lifetime, and couldn't help but admire him. Grandpa often says, do your job, love your job. Grandpa said so, but in fact, he did it. He taught books in the village for nearly forty years, almost teaching the ancestors and grandchildren of the villagers for three generations. Unfortunately, Xia Muyu did not attend her grandfather's classes seriously. The only time was when there was no one else at home, and five-year-old Xia Muyu was left unattended. Grandpa couldn't take Xia Muyu to school to sit in the classroom with those older brothers and sisters. In the classroom, Xia Muyu is not honest at all. She sometimes grabs other people's textbooks, runs around the classroom, and sometimes defecates and pees, making her classmates burst into laughter and have no intention of listening. Grandpa is so angry that he won't take Xia Muyu to school again in the future. When Xia Muyu reached the age of enrollment, he followed his uncle and aunt to live in the town because he was staying with them. From then on, until work, he rarely returned to the village. But being able to shine and heat up in one place like her grandfather has always been a wish in Xia Muyu's heart. Now that teacher he is busy and unable to come, Xia Muyu has graduated with a master's degree in the past life, and still has more than enough time to teach elementary school students. He wants to seize this opportunity to teach in primary school. I can teach them, I can teach every subject. As soon as these words were spoken, Xia Muyu regretted it. She forgot that the original owner did not love learning since childhood and stopped reading before finishing elementary school. Her grandmother and aunts were very happy when they arrived, hoping that she would stop reading. From then on, Xia Muyu will work at home doing farm work. The original owner was still a sensible child. After coming out of school, she helped her mother share a lot of household chores. Can you teach? Is the sun coming out from the west? The men playing cards over there burst into laughter. Xia Muyu felt a little embarrassed, but also knew that it was not time to prove herself. It's no use proving to these people. She can only have the opportunity to teach after they agree. He didn't say anything, thinking that he still had to go to the education bureau. At this moment, Aunt Wang's son Wang Xiaoman walked out of the inner room. Shouting, you guys keep your voice down, it's really bothering me. Dad, you're going to play cards and go out to play. Wang Xiaoman failed the college entrance examination this year and is currently repeating his studies. He plans to fight again next year. Looking at Wang Xiaoman's messy hair and lifeless face, he knows that this child is studying too hard. You child has gone crazy, dare you command me. Wang Xiaoman's father was about to come up and beat someone up. Everyone quickly dissuaded, Xiaoman's father, Xiaoman also wants to study hard. Why do you have to hit the child? I think he just deserves to be beaten. Since high school, he has been sitting in his room every day talking about studying, not doing anything at home or in the field. In the end, I still haven't passed the exam. I think it's just using the college entrance examination as an excuse to slack off. 
Wang Xiaoman's father had a hot temper and disregarded everyone's advice. He picked up the stick next to him and was about to pull it at Wang Xiaoman. As a result, due to being too emotional and raising his hand too high, when the stick was swung from behind, it would shout at Sun Yonghong's face. At that moment, Xia Muyu urgently turned around to protect Sun Yonghong's head, and the stick hit Xia Muyu's waist without bias. Xia Muyu felt a pang of pain, and with a groan, both of them stumbled onto the ground along with Sun Yonghong. This scared Wang's father and mother so much that they were about to fall. What should we do? Hurriedly approaching to check the situation, Wang Xiaoman also leaned in and asked nervously, Xia Muyu, how are you? Are you okay? Xia Muyu felt that apart from the injury and pain she suffered from falling last night, everything else was okay, so she waved her hand. It's okay, mom. Are you okay? When Xia Muyu fell, she was afraid of crushing Xia's mother, so she twisted her steps and placed her mat under Sun Yonghong. Mom is fine, nothing at all, it's just whether Xiao Yu hurts or not. Sun Yonghong was very worried. It's a bit painful, I'll take a moment to relieve it. Xiao Muyu felt that the pain on her body needed to last for a while. Xiao Yu, if you don't mind, let's rest in Xiaoman's room. Xiaoman's room is clean. In fact, every household in rural areas nowadays is too poor and lack so dot called guest rooms. The living room is full of people chatting, so it's not suitable to bring Xiaomuyu to their couple's room, so the best place to rest is still Wang Xiaoman's room. After Xiaomuyu nodded, he and Sun Yonghong helped Xiaomuyu into Wang Xiaoman's room. Chapter 4 Who Copes Who is a Dog? You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Xia Muyu never has any expectations for the cleanliness of male rooms, just hoping that there is no foot odor. After entering, surprisingly, Wang Xiaoman's room was exceptionally clean. There is no dust or odor, there are not many things but they are all in their respective positions, and there is no littering. The most prominent feature is still the desk, with neatly arranged stacks of books, as neat as new ones, but it is also evident that each book has traces of reading. Wang Xiaoman, not bad. Your room is really neat and doesn't look like a boy's room at all. As he spoke, he reached out to flip through Wang Xiaoman's books. Don't touch my things. If you want to rest, just sit by my bed. You can't move anything on the table at all. Wang Xiaoman's tone was both irritable and contemptuous. He has a somewhat solitary personality since childhood and doesn't like to play with peers. He studies hard, so he doesn't like people who don't love learning. He even looks down on Xiaomuyu for not finishing elementary school and getting his peers. After finishing speaking, Wang Xiaoman sat at his desk and continued to work on his questions, and Xiaomuyu didn't want to disturb him anymore. But watching Wang Xiaoman tugging at his hair with his left hand, looking anxious, Xiaomuyu felt very amused. Just like her bad habit in her previous life, she would involuntarily pull up her hair when faced with difficult problems. In the end, his hair was pulled bald, and Xiaomuyu thought to herself that Wang Xiaoman was probably not far from the Mediterranean. Thinking of this, Xiaomuyu couldn't help but chuckle. What are you laughing at? Wang Xiaoman felt unhappy in his heart. It's nothing, just the way you scratch your ears and cheeks feels very cute. The word, cute, left Wang Xiaoman confused while feeling a little insulted. Don't talk nonsense and don't disturb my studies. Do you know how precious time is for college students? Forget it, even if you say it, you don't understand. Play the piano to a cow. This time it was Xiaomuyu's turn to feel insulted. How could you be like this? You called me a cow, and I'm so angry. Xiaomuyu sat by the bed with a strong breath and didn't want to talk much anymore. Watching Wang Xiaoman doing the exercises, Xiaomuyu suddenly had a thought in her heart. I remember the teacher said that the previous college entrance examination questions were very simple, and if I took the exam myself, wouldn't it be very advantageous? In the previous life, Xiaomuyu actually achieved quite good results, but not the top type. 
In the end, I did well in the college entrance examination and went to a top 10 school in the country, which was not so dazzling, but it was also considered very good. If I also take the college entrance examination in this lifetime, will I have the opportunity to attend the university I have always dreamed of? Just thinking about it, Xiaomiu became somewhat excited. She quietly approached Wang Xiaoman, wanting to probe and see what the current college entrance examination questions were like. As soon as I approached, I was noticed by Wang Xiaoman. He turned his head impatiently and asked, What are you doing? In the moment of turning his head, Wang Xiaoman's face met Xiaomiu who was approaching. In an instant, both of them felt each other's breath, and the air solidified. At that moment, Xiaomiu finally saw Wang Xiaoman's face clearly. His handsome face appears very fair because he has been studying at home for a long time without being exposed to the sun. Exquisite facial features, small and cute, long dot term study has led to a hint of sickly temperament on the tired face. For Xiaomiu, a super beauty control, this is simply a must dot have image for the male lead in the novel, Sick Jiao. Xiaomiu couldn't help but swallow her saliva. Wang Xiaoman suddenly panicked and quickly stood up to dodge. He had never been so close to any girl since he was so big. He blushed shyly to the base of his ear. You, you, you. Wang Xiaoman didn't hold back a complete sentence even after saying a few words about you. What are you? I just want to take a look at your exam paper, as for being so stingy. As he pretended to be calm, he picked up Wang Xiaoman's test paper and read it. In fact, the little deer in his heart was still pounding. Why are you looking at my exam paper? You can't understand it. Don't break it for me, return it to me quickly. Reaching out to grab the paper from Xiaomiu's hand, Xiaomiu suddenly lifted her head and met Wang Xiaoman's face again. Wang Xiaoman blushed like an apple once again, and when he saw that he couldn't grab the exam paper, he gave up. So it's English, I'm familiar with it. In her previous life, English was Xiaomiu's strong suit, so after graduation, Xiaomiu directly gave up her original major and turned to a well. Known English education institution. However, it is mainly because this institution offers the highest salary and generous treatment. And her classmates either study abroad or enter enterprises and institutions, doing iron rice bowl jobs that give their elders a unique face. What are you familiar with? This is English, can you understand it? Wang Xiaoman was full of disdain. You made a mistake in this question, you should choose B. Wang Xiaoman picked up the answer book to check and indeed chose B. But he didn't believe that Xiaomiu, who hadn't finished elementary school, would look at his English test paper and said stiffly, you're just being confused, right? Xiaomiu didn't talk to him anymore. She picked up English and started reading, with fluent pronunciation and moderate speed, comparable to the level of an English announcer. At this moment, Aunt Wang had just peeled an apple and sent it to Wang Xiaoman. As soon as I walked to the door, I heard Xiaomiu reading English. Although Aunt Wang couldn't understand what she was reading at all, every morning when she listened to Wang Xiaoman reciting English, she knew that he was speaking a foreign language. Xiaoman his mother, I said to pour me a glass of water. Why hasn't he come yet? Do you want to die of thirst? Wang Xiaoman's father impatiently shouted towards this side. Aunt Wang quickly made a virtual gesture towards Xiaoman's father and waved to signal everyone to come over. Everyone thought the two children were having a conflict in the room, so they all joined in. What's the situation, Sister Wang? Did the two of them fight? Seeing Aunt Wang make another empty gesture, someone couldn't help but ask, What are you doing? It's so mysterious. Everyone approached the door and could only hear the sound of Xiaomiu reciting English reading, clear and pleasant to the ear. Sitting here are farmers who face the yellow soil and face the sky, not to mention those who know English, even those who have truly heard English a few times are very few. The last time I listened to English was when teacher he held a parent-teacher's meeting. In order to promote the importance of learning English, I gave a brief self-introduction in English at the school-wide meeting. 
and they heard Xiaomiu's extremely fluent English reading, their faces full of disbelief. After reading, Xiaomiu looked at the reading question done by Wang Xiaoman again. You see, this is not done right. The end time of this event mentioned in the article is 1897, while the year 1895 you chose, although mentioned in the article, is not the final end time. Please note that there is also a sentence here that is two years later. Wang Xiaoman looked at the original text pointed at by Xiaomiu, and indeed he missed the key information. When everyone heard that Xiaomiu not only read the article but also pointed out Wang Xiaoman's mistake, they were amazed and amazed. Yonghong, who did your family Xiaoyu learn English from? Later, I will also let my child learn along. Yonghong, and my family, my children are also going to learn. And my family, everyone signed up to learn from Xiaoyu's teacher. This really put son Yonghong in a difficult position. She has never seen Xiaoyu learn English before, let alone any teachers. Well, I didn't know Xiaoyu could speak English before. Everyone looked at Sun Yonghong with disappointment on her face, it seemed that she didn't want to tell them the secret of learning. The voices of everyone's discussion grew louder and louder, to the point where the two of them noticed the commotion outside and pushed open the door. Everyone suddenly gathered around and said, Xiaoyu, where did you learn English? You're so good at it. Tell me about it, and I'll have our family Tao Tao learn it too. And me, tell me, I want our family's son Han to also learn. I don't know if it was the atmosphere driving it, or if it was really shocked by Xiaomiu's reading. Everyone came forward to inquire. This makes Wang Xiaoman very embarrassed. Despite studying hard for so many years, he was actually compared to a primary school student. It's unbelievable, it's too embarrassing. The more Wang Xiaoman thought about it, the more he became dissatisfied. She's just a coincidence. Being able to read doesn't mean she can solve problems. Now it's all exam-oriented education, and only when she scores on problems can she count. How did you know that I wouldn't be able to solve the problem? Wang Xiaoman's words immediately aroused Xiaomiu's desire to win or lose. Yeah, you haven't read a book yet, how could you know? Everyone was also very skeptical. Let's compete. If I lose, I'll admit I was guessing. Xiaomiu said word by word. Compared to what? Wang Xiaoman didn't care much. It's up to you the final say, but if you lose, you will lend me your review materials for the college entrance examination. This directly made Wang Xiaoman laugh. Do you still want to take the college entrance examination? I don't know, how can I remember not finishing fourth grade at Xiaoyu Elementary School? She's going to take the college entrance examination, it's just a fantasy. It's like a set of English test papers. If you score higher than me, I'll lend you all the books and offer you tea as a teacher. But if you lose, not only do you have to admit that you're guessing, but you also have to help my mom wash her clothes. Still paying respects to tea in apprenticeship, Xiaomiu finds it very funny. I'm afraid this child has read too many martial arts novels. Okay, that's settled. Xiaomiu readily agreed. Aunt Zhang next door touched Sun Yonghong's elbow and said, They are only five points away from the score line in the Xiaoman College entrance examination, but our good grades in the third place of the 10 mile 8 rural areas are likely to be at a disadvantage under the light rain. Although the bet may not seem like a big deal, in this cold winter, the water is almost freezing, and the villagers are most afraid of washing clothes. Sun Yonghong is still very worried that Xiaomiu will lose. Xiaomiu noticed the change in her mother's expression and knew that she was worried about her. She stepped forward and comforted, Mom, you have a hundred hearts, and I won't lose. Looking at Xiaomiu's promise, Wang Xiaoman felt a little happy. He was looking forward to seeing Xiaomiu wash his mother's clothes at home after he lost. Wang Xiaoman took out a stack of test papers and asked, which one should I take? You can choose, so that everyone doesn't think I'm bullying girls. Whatever. Xiaomiu sneered. If you don't have a chance to choose, then just draw any one. Don't cry if you lose later. 
Wang Xiaoman closed his eyes and casually took one to avoid suspicion, spreading it out on the table. There is only one copy of the test papers, so let's share one. I don't care. Xiao Muyu didn't care at all. I don't care what you don't care about, I just want to remind you not to copy my answers. Whoever copied, who is the dog? The two of them fought like children, causing everyone to laugh uncontrollably. Based on your elementary school level score, I won't let you suffer, I'll give you 20 points. You don't need to let me. The competition has officially begun. Chapter 5 Cheating in the Competition You are listening at NovelFull.audio For the sake of fairness and to prevent cheating, some people have proposed dividing a set of test papers into two sheets, with each sheet pasted on a wall. Each person should take one sheet and exchange the completed sheet for the next. Everyone unanimously agrees. The competition started, Xia Muyu started from the first sheet of the exam paper, and Wang Xiaoman started from the second sheet. The two of them occasionally muttered words. Everyone on site held their breath, and no one dared to make a sound to disturb the two of them. In this era, there are very few people who value education, let alone in this remote Xiaojia village. Most children can only go home to farm after graduating from primary school. Few people like Wang Xiaoman can reach high school, and farmers have insufficient understanding of education. Unfortunately, this year's college entrance examination saw the only female college student named Xia Zihan emerge from this village, who is also Xia Muyu's cousin. The government personally came to the village to congratulate and even gave the Xia family a big red envelope, which made the Xia family shine brightly. After the government leadership's commendation meeting, the villagers also learned about it. If you graduate from university, the government will not only arrange urban jobs, but also arrange urban household registration, which can directly get rid of your identity as a farmer. If you have excellent academic performance in college and are admitted to a good unit, you will also be allocated welfare housing. The villagers were envious of it. Then, an incredibly handsome teacher he was brought in, and the learning atmosphere in the village suddenly rose. At this moment, the villagers who couldn't understand and felt bored quickly ran home and called their school.age children over to watch. A group of children stood in the courtyard of the Wang family one after another. On their way here, they were reminded by their parents to keep quiet and not disturb the two of them in battle. So now the children are all squeezing at the door, stretching their necks and looking inside, and no one has crossed the threshold. In less than ten minutes, Xia Muyu had finished the first test paper. The English test paper in this era is simple, Xia Muyu sighed. Turning around to see Wang Xiaoman still reading a reading question, it seems that he hasn't started writing an essay yet. I think I won't disturb him for now, and I'll wait for him to finish writing the two of them before switching papers together. So he stretched lazily and found a chair to sit on for a rest, and the villagers couldn't help but whisper to each other as they watched the scene. Xia's daughter doesn't know how to write anymore. Why did she sit down? I guess I don't know how to write it anymore. Isn't she good at English? She just read it so well. We don't understand English, maybe she's reading blindly. Anyway, even if she reads blindly, we can't hear her. Xia Muyu almost burst out laughing when she heard this conversation. Still reading blindly, you should know that the difficulty of organizing language through blind reading is even more difficult than reading directly. Where is extraterrestrial language so easy to create? But she didn't want to disturb Wang Xiaoman, so she didn't explain much. Che, I thought she had the same talent for reading as her cousin, but I didn't expect that a haystack would be a haystack. This person's voice is not low. Xia Zihan was admitted to university. Although some villagers are envious, there are also a few villagers who are jealous. Xia Zihan's admission to university has already turned their eyes red. If Xia Muyu still has this ability, it means that the Xia family has a smart gene in their genes. They don't want to admit that their family is worse than the Xia family. Upon hearing this, Sun Yonghong's face became embarrassed. 
Xia Muyu noticed the change in her mother's emotions and didn't want to make her difficult. She got up and continued to take the second exam, while Wang Xiaoman was still working on it. As soon as Xia Muyu approached, Wang Xiaoman covered his answer in his hand and said, Do you want to copy my answer? Who wants to copy your answer? I finished that one and changed it to this one. Wang Xiaoman doesn't believe it at all. Even though it's only been a dozen or so minutes, how could he have finished one? Obviously, he has no knowledge of Xia Muyu's English proficiency. In her previous life, Xia Muyu worked at the first English education institution in China and served as the top lecturer for two years. Due to the expansion of the company's business, she was able to become a sales anchor for the company, and English is her strongest ability. Xiao Yu, if you can't do it, admit that you can't do it. It's only been over ten minutes, and your answers are all fabricated, right? Anyway, your picture is all multiple dot choice questions, and even if you make up things blindly, others won't be able to see it. It's just that the score may be very embarrassing later on. I advise you to give up and give up now, so as not to be in a more awkward situation later on. Stop talking nonsense, you should write quickly and don't delay me from doing the questions. Xia Muyu turned 45 degrees and left the side and rear to Wang Xiaoman. Wang Xiaoman caught a glimpse of the scratch on Xia Muyu's neck and didn't say anything more. This exam paper is a bit troublesome to do. There are options, fill in the blanks, make sentences, and write essays, with a lot of parts to write. However, it's not difficult for Xia Muyu, as standing and writing can be a bit troublesome. Wang Xiaoman wrote it lying on the wall, slightly better. Xia Muyu deliberately turned around to prevent Wang Xiaoman from misunderstanding. This way, I can't lie on the wall and write, so I can only use my hands and arms to support the answer sheet, which seriously affects Xia Muyu's writing speed. The children watched as their two older brothers and sisters rushed to write, their eyes eager for knowledge, and they were mesmerized. They basically learned it in half a year, and compared to working in the field, they prefer to sit in the classroom and read. Teacher he is humorous and witty in class, and the children are often made to burst out laughing. This is not much better than working in the fields and feeling tired and hungry. Just as Wang Xiaoman had just finished writing his second exam paper and was about to switch to the first one, Xia Muyu had also finished writing his second exam paper. She placed the answer sheet on the table and waited quietly for Wang Xiaoman to finish the first one as well. Watching Xia Muyu write so fast, even though he has already gone to high school in the county and met many urban children, many of whom have been learning English since childhood. Even so, there is no one in the class who is as fast as Xia Muyu in solving problems, and Wang Xiaoman is even more certain that Xia Muyu is just writing recklessly. Why doesn't Sister Xiaoyu write anymore? Can't she? The child asked his mother softly. Su, don't talk, your Xiaoman brother is still writing. Wang Jie, from this perspective, it becomes very clear who can and cannot do the exercises. I just said that your family's Xiaoman was smart from a young age, and some people, even if they want to pretend to be cultured, cannot show off. Aunt Wang was very grateful for this compliment. On weekdays, Xiaoman from her family has better grades than Xia Zihan, and Aunt Wang has been praised a lot. As a result, Xia Zihan passed the college entrance examination, but Wang Xiaoman fell behind. If you compliment me, it's all up to the Xia family, which has left Aunt Wang feeling dissatisfied for a long time. This time, we can finally win back a game. Although Xia Muyu was not meant to be a student, at least he was also from the Xia family, and it was also their face that was lost. Don't wait until the end of this year's college entrance examination. During the summer vacation, let my family Tao Tao follow your family Xiaoman for tutoring. And my house, my house is round. And my little cow. The villagers gathered around Aunt Wang, hoping to get this learning opportunity. Aunt Wang's face smiled even more proudly. Half an hour later, Wang Xiaoman finally finished writing. Looking back, Xia Muyu had already fallen asleep on the table. Indeed, it's not for reading. 
In such a tense moment with so many people watching, it's surprising that one can still fall asleep. This phenomenon only happens to the students who are at the bottom of the class, Wang Xiaoman shook his head and thought to himself. He knocked on the table and woke Xiaomu up. Hey, wake up, you got the answer. For the sake of fairness, let's change each other, he said, putting the correct answer on the table Wang Xiaoman handed the answer sheet to Xiaomu. Xiaomu slept soundly, probably because she didn't sleep much last night and felt unusually tired. Xiaomu lifted her head and her answer sheet touched her face directly. Xiaomu felt a flurry and said, Oh my god, my saliva is flowing out. It's embarrassing. Xiaomu's awkward toes are about to be dug out of the three bedroom and one living room. The villagers burst into laughter, just like when their children didn't study hard. Xiaomu smiled awkwardly and said, Why don't we each make our own changes? Look at my paper. Xiaomu raised the answer sheet with saliva in her hand. Xiaoyu, you don't mean to cheat while grading the exam paper, do you? Yeah, Xiaoyu, you can still just give up now. Why use cheating methods? What should we do if we teach bad kids? We won't laugh at you if it's not as good as Xiaoman. Xiaoman is a prospective college student in our village. The villagers all want Xiaoman to tutor their children in the future, so they don't miss any opportunity to please Aunt Wang. Xiaomuyu has a headache from being disturbed. She clearly felt embarrassed to have Wang Xiaoman correct the drool stain test paper, but now she's been dragged into cheating again. The difficulty of this exam paper is not as fast as she can write the answers herself. Okay, okay, swap and change. There is only one answer, and it is inconvenient to make changes at the same time. Wang Xiaoman said magnanimously, Let's change mine first. This way, if you want to renege and stop gambling later, you'll still have time. Wang Xiaoman thought that if his score was much higher than that of Xiaomuyu, Xiaomuyu would be too embarrassed. If he cried again, everyone would think he was bullying girls. It's not necessary, let's make changes together. Xiaomuyu was too lazy to talk nonsense. Wang Xiaoman didn't say much anymore and sat down with Xiaomuyu to correct the other person's answer sheet in front of the standard answer. The weather was extremely cold, and the villagers waiting outside could no longer bear the cold outside. When they finished writing, their heads rushed in and surrounded the brazier. There were too many people, and Xiaomuyu and Wang Xiaoman were constantly squeezed together, almost touching each other. Wang Xiaoman felt the breath of Xiaomuyu and his mood was a bit chaotic. I saw Xiaomuyu holding a pen and drawing several circles on the answer sheet, while Wang Xiaoman never touched his pen. A enthusiastic villager asked, Xiaoman, why haven't you started making changes? Wang Xiaoman closed his teeth tightly and remained silent. Until the two of them changed to the last essay question, Wang Xiaoman never touched his pen. In no time, Wang Xiaoman got up and walked into the room, taking out the English dictionary. This dictionary was still given by a female classmate when he was studying in the county. Wang Xiaoman didn't want to accept the gift from the female classmate, but he needed it too much and reluctantly accepted it. Wang Xiaoman looked up several words in Xiaomuyu's English essay and surprisingly found them all in the dictionary. At this moment, Wang Xiaoman was not calm anymore. Even if Xiaomuyu cheated in advance and used the standard answer to copy, the vocabulary of this essay was not even enough to match the standard answer, which shocked Wang Xiaoman. Chapter 6 Full Score Impossible You are listening at NovelFull.audio As the two put down their answer sheets, the villagers eagerly asked. How many points, how many points do you two have? Wang Xiaoman closed his lips tightly and didn't say a word. Xiaoyu, how many points are we full of? Aunt Wang asked Xiaomuyu with a smile. Her son has always been her pride, and his grades have been good since childhood. After attending the high school in the county town, Aunt Wang visited her son several times and received praise from the teachers. The teachers all said that their family was full of good students studying. 
Xiaomiu looked at Wang Xiaoman and in Xiaomiu's heart, it couldn't be considered a high score. She has no concept of high scores in this era, and is afraid of speaking up rashly and losing face for Wang Xiaoman. Sister Xiaoyu, talk about Xiaoman's score quickly. We are all too curious, was a childish voice. This child is often taken as a role model by her parents at home, encouraging her to learn. The little girl also gained momentum, and her grades were getting better and better. Over time, her admiration for Xiaoman also grew higher and higher. Xiaomiu whispered to Wang Xiaoman, Do you say it first or should I say it first? At this point, Wang Xiaoman already knew he had lost and felt very embarrassed. Especially under the gaze of her parents and with so many villagers watching, Xiaomiu lost to what everyone thought was a straw bag. Every question from everyone seemed like a lingering mockery to Wang Xiaoman. Wang Xiaoman couldn't bear such a scene for a moment and suddenly rushed out of the crowd towards the bedroom, closing the door tightly with a bang. What's wrong with Xiaoman? Did you lose? No, how could Xiaoman lose to someone at the level of an elementary school student? The villagers were speculating incessantly, and Xiaomiu was also puzzled by Wang Xiaoman's behavior. At this moment, the little girl Xiaoyan, who had just spoken, couldn't resist her curiosity and grabbed Xiaomiu's hand to see the score on the answer sheet in her hand. 93 points, Xiaoman brother is 93 points, Xiaoman brother is so amazing. The little girl danced happily. Although their elementary school students don't have much idea about their scores, they also know that if they can score 93 in the exam, their teacher he will reward them with big white rabbit milk candy. But there are always only one or two people in the class, and sometimes no one can win this big white rabbit milk candy. 93 points, really impressive. I didn't even pass the exam when I was studying. When you were reading, you even copied me but didn't pass. You even copied my name in, and you still have the face to say, the villagers laughed heartily at the Lee couple. Miss Wong, your family's young master really has great potential. He scores so high in any exam, and it's still a foreign language that we can't understand. Miss Zhang never misses any opportunity to compliment Aunt Wang, and she still wants Xiao Man to tutor her child. Oh my goodness! Only one child's scream sounded. What's wrong, Tao Tao? Tao Tao's mother quickly stepped forward to look at her son. Tao Tao, are you feeling unwell? Mom, I'm not feeling unwell. I saw Sister Xiaoyu score 100 points, and teacher he said that as long as one person in school scores 100 points, they will take us to the county town for an outing. Although there are not many farmers who can read and have not read, everyone still understands a score of 100. What, did you say that Xiaoyu got 100 points? How could this be possible? But mom, it's clearly written as 100 points on this exam paper, Tao Tao raised the paper with a firm expression. Tao Tao has always liked Sister Xiaomiu, for no other reason, just because Sister Xiaoyu is beautiful. He likes to play with Sister Xiaoyu, and this child has had a keen eye since childhood. The crowd gathered around and blocked Tao Tao. That's really 100 points. How could this be? Did you make a mistake? Xiao Man personally made the changes, which should be correct. That's just Xiaoyu cheating. Yes, yes, I'm sure I cheated. Everyone was discussing it one after another. They would rather believe that the sun would shine in the west than that Xiaomuyu would get a perfect score on the exam. Xiaomuyu was speechless. Even if she had supernatural abilities, she couldn't cheat under the noses of so many people. I didn't cheat, Xiaomuyu was about to explain when the door behind her slammed open. Wang Xiaoman almost spoke in unison with Xiaomiu, she didn't cheat, she really got a perfect score. Just now, Wang Xiaoman hid inside the house, just like the villagers, unable to accept the fact that Xiaomiu, who was at the elementary school level, not only did he score higher than himself, but also got a perfect score. At first, I began to doubt my learning ability and also doubted whether Xiaomiu had cheated. After he entered the house, 
he stayed away from the noise of the crowd and calmed down to reflect. At first glance, I caught a glimpse of the reading that Xiaomuyu had just read on the table. I remembered Xiaomuyu's standard American pronunciation and quickly pointed out his mistakes in doing the exercises. In an instant, my intelligence returned to my brain. Xiaomuyu really knows English very well. Wang Xiaoman was puzzled by how Xiaomuyu learned English, and on second thought, it's not too late to ask for advice slowly in the future. Xiaomuyu breathed a sigh of relief when she saw Wang Xiaoman come out to prove herself. She knows that with the image of the original owner in the hearts of the villagers, no matter how she explains it, no one will believe it. Xiaomuyu even had a different feeling for Wang Xiaoman in her heart. In the original owner's memory, Wang Xiaoman hardly played with her since childhood because she didn't love learning. Wang Xiaoman hates children who don't love learning. When he grows up, he goes out to study, and the two of them have no interaction anymore. And Wang Xiaoman's willingness to put down the face of a scholar and explain to himself now indicates that Wang Xiaoman is still a very loyal person. At this moment, Li Dagang, the village branch secretary, passed by from here. He had just returned from a meeting in the county and saw this large group of people gathered at the entrance of the Wang family, which felt a bit strange. He pushed open the courtyard door and walked in, asking, What are you guys doing? They're all gathered here. Everyone saw that the village chief had returned and quickly made way for Li Dagang to enter the house. Can you tell me what happened? Uncle Li, Tao Tao's tender voice sweetly called out, Sister Xiaoyu and Brother Xiaoman are competing. Li Dagang picked up Tao Tao and kindly asked, What are the brothers and sisters competing for? I competed in English, and Sister Xiaoyu got full marks. Tao Tao looked proud, as if his own sister had received full marks. Li Dagang was a bit surprised. Is there anyone in the village who is so good at English? The content of today's meeting in the county is how to improve the cultural quality of the villagers. Maybe next time I go to the county to report my work, there will be available materials. Really, let me take a look at the exam paper, she said, reaching out for the paper. What's there to see? She must have cheated. A disharmonious voice came from the crowd. That's right, it's probably cheating. The real score is 93 on Xiaoman's exam. Some people who flatter the royal family are maliciously speculating. Li Dagang ignored these and picked up the two answer sheets on the desk to take a look. Li Dagang was a person who had read books. At that time, due to historical reasons, the foreign language he learned was still Russian, and he had never learned English. But he still could see the difference in handwriting between the two papers. The answer sheet with a score of 100 is clearly written neatly, and each English word is written beautifully and beautifully, with the font style he saw in the English magazine at the County Cultural Center. The other 93.1 is also pretty good, but the font is a bit stiff and can only be described as neat. Looking at the font alone, it is obvious that Xiaomuyu's test paper is superior. Li Dagang looked up at Wang Xiaoman and asked, Xiaoman, can you tell me what they said about cheating? Did they say that Xiaoyu cheated? Speaking, he pointed to Xiaomuyu. She didn't cheat, Wang Xiaoman replied affirmatively again. Xiaomuyu and I answered the questions together, and the test papers were randomly selected by me. We also answered the questions together under the witness of everyone, and there was no chance of cheating. Upon hearing this analysis, Li Dagang strongly agrees with Wang Xiaoman's statement. Xiaomuyu didn't say a word throughout the process. She wasn't someone who loves to prove herself, but seeing Wang Xiaoman explain herself like this, she was still a little happy in her heart. Moreover, Wang Xiaoman hesitated, feeling that speaking out might be embarrassing. And what? Li Dagang looked at Wang Xiaoman's hesitant expression, feeling a bit anxious, and the villagers were also a bit anxious. Moreover, 100 points should not be the upper limit of Xiaoyu's level. Xiaomuyu didn't even know what Wang Xiaoman was going to say. Her essay vocabulary has exceeded our high school student's level. 
her intonation and fluency in reading English can be compared to our teachers. Li Dagang took a deep breath and looked at Xiaomuyu incredulously. Is there such a good seedling in our village? He didn't know at all before. Li Dagang remembered what he had done in the county town today and felt hopeful that it had been completed. Li Dagang cleared his throat and said to Xiaomuyu, Xiaoyu, Uncle Li didn't even notice that you are a good student before. I really didn't expect that your Xia family is really talented. As she spoke, she looked at Xia's mother. Seeing the village chief praising her family so much, Xia's mother showed a hint of shyness. Xiaoyu, Uncle Li wants to discuss something with you. Would you like it or not? It's like this, isn't there any teacher teaching in the village this year? The cultural atmosphere in the village has finally improved, and now teacher he can't come because of family matters. Look at these children in the village, they just fall in love with studying and then drop out of school again. Uncle Li, I can't bear it anymore. Li Dagong sighed. Today, I went to the county and applied to the leaders above to transfer a teacher to our village. The response from the county is still that the number of teachers is scarce, let's wait a little longer. It seems that the school will start soon after the end of the Chinese New Year, and we can't handle this. I'm afraid everyone will not have a good New Year. So you see, do you want to take on the position of temporary teacher after the New Year? If you're willing, I'll report to the county. Don't worry, once approved by the county, you will be the official teacher of our village and receive a salary. When he said this, Li Dagong was somewhat uneasy, worried that the villagers wouldn't agree. But fortunately, everyone still supported his work and responded, Wow, my child can go to school again. Xiaomuyu was a bit surprised that this job came so easily. She had always thought about just crossing over, and although she had some understanding of this era, she had not truly experienced it firsthand. So I want to do something to subsidize my family in the village first, and then go out and explore once everything is clear. This arrangement fits her perfectly. Okay, Uncle Lee, I am willing to accept this job. Thank you also for Uncle Lee's willingness to provide me with this job. Seeing Xia Miu so polite and polite, Li Dagong was a bit surprised. In the past, Xia Miu was simply a stuffy gourd, not fond of studying or talking, and didn't know how to greet people. A few times, Xia Muyu lowered her head and walked away without looking like an elder in her eyes. It seems like a person has changed, and it is indeed a woman's 18th birthday. With these words, the sky darkened, and after discussing with Xia Muyu, Li Dagong went back. Xia Muyu also noticed that it was getting late and said to Wang Xiaoman, Wang Xiaoman, don't forget what you promised me. After speaking, take Sun Yonghong home. After Xiaomuyu left, the villagers began to discuss one after another. Why did Xiaomuyu suddenly learn English? There seems to be a bit of a mystery when it comes to this matter. Do you feel that Xiaomuyu has become a different person? Not only does she know English, but her demeanor is also different from before, the careful villager analyzed. Yes, yes, I also feel that Xiaomuyu seems different from before. Could it be that Lu Jiqing's upcoming marriage that has stimulated her? You seem to make some sense when you say that. Xia Miu's English is probably taught by Lu Jiqing. Where was it taught? Was it taught in bed? Don't talk nonsense, be careful that Hu Daeong will beat you up. The villagers burst into laughter. In this backward village, the overall cultural literacy of the villagers is very low, often making colorful jokes. Of course, these words are all long-tongued villagers talking behind their backs. After strolling around the village and returning home, Xiaomuyu felt that she had adapted to this era. Unexpectedly, what happened later would almost explode her anger. Chapter 7 Liquid in the Palm You are listening at NovelFull.audio Xiaomuyu pushed open the door of her room and saw that it was like a miscellaneous room, filled with all kinds of messy things. There are farm tools, firewood, and various miscellaneous items at home, making it almost impossible for people to stay. Some things still emit a faint odor, 
which is mixed with the smell of mold in the room, making people unable to open their eyes. Xiaomuyu was furious and said, Who made my room look like this? Xiaomuyu was almost roaring. Xiaomuyu's aunt heard her shouting and came from the main house. Shouting loudly, What's the noise? Who's the woman from that family with such a loud voice like you, like a shrew? Xiaomuyu smiled directly, It's not just about herself. Auntie, why did this room turn into this when I went out for a while? Xiaomuyu looked very angry at the room where she couldn't even sleep. Aunt Xiaomuyu, Li Guixiang, put her hands on her waist and said, Originally, this room was planned to wait for you to get married. This room will be used as a miscellaneous room. Don't you think our place is so small, there's no place to put these things. We'll just wait for you to get married and give up your room, so it's easy to pile up clutter. Xiaomuyu was speechless. But auntie, isn't it that I broke up? I broke up and you still occupied my room. Where do you want me to stay? Li Guixiang clearly did it intentionally. Xiaomuyu had been married for a while, and Li Guixiang didn't even think of using this room as a miscellaneous room. As soon as she got married, she occupied the room. Who made you break up? What's wrong with Hu Daeong? He insisted on you breaking up. You said Hu Daeong hit you, isn't it normal for a couple to have a fight in this rural area? I really thought I was a wealthy lady. You got married and come back. Where else do you live in your mother's house? Speaking, Li Guixiang brought another bag of foul-smelling fertilizer to the summer rain room. Xiaomuyu grabbed Li Guixiang and didn't let her in. Li Guixiang turned around and was about to reach out and hit Xiaomuyu. Li Guixiang is tall and imposing, while Xiaomuyu, due to long-term abuse, is thin and obviously not a match for Li Guixiang. Sun Yonghong was afraid that Xiaomuyu would suffer losses, so she quickly stepped forward to dissuade him. Sister-in-law, don't hit Xiaoyu. Xiaoyu's injury hasn't healed yet. What should we do if it breaks again? At that moment, Li Guixiang couldn't control her hand and slapped Sun Yonghong. Sun Yonghong was taken and stumbled, almost falling to the ground. This has angered Xiaomuyu, although she cannot match Li Guixiang in terms of body size. But in her previous life, Xiaomuyu lived alone for a long time and was afraid that single women would encounter danger outside, so she sought a coach to learn combat skills specifically. Xiaomuyu grabbed Li Guixiang's hair and made her feel so painful that she couldn't move. Take another backhand capture and directly press Li Guixiang to the ground. Although Li Guixiang is overweight, her long dot term laziness and eating habits have led her to develop a body full of fat, but she truly lacks any strength. Li Guixiang shouted, Killing, Xiaomuyu is going to kill. Fortunately, at this time, all the neighbors were still at Aunt Wang's house, and no one rushed over. But Li Guixiang couldn't resist her loud voice. Xiaomuyu was very annoyed by the noise, so she grabbed a handful of fertilizer and stuffed it into Li Guixiang's mouth. Li Guixiang was nauseous and coughed up. Sun Yonghong was stunned by Xiaomuyu's actions and stood still. It wasn't until Xiaomuyu asked Sun Yonghong to bring some rope over that Sun Yonghong regained her senses and ran into the house to find a bundle of ropes. Xiaomuyu tied up Li Guixiang's hands and feet, and Li Guixiang wanted to shout, but when she saw the fertilizer on Xiaomuyu's hand, she didn't dare to make a sound. Xiaomuyu brought Li Guixiang into the room and tied her to the smelliest spot in the room. With a smile on his face, he said to Li Guixiang, Auntie, you have occupied my room and I won't be able to sleep tonight. Since you like my room so much, then this room belongs to you tonight. If you stay here tonight, my mother and I will stay in your room tonight. Summer Rain Li Guixiang struggled hard on the ground, staring at Xiaomuyu with red eyes, as if she wanted to kill her with her eyes. Xiaomuyu saw Li Guixiang's angry expression and wanted to scare her again. He said, Auntie, I learned how to tie this rope from Hu Daeong. You know how fierce Hu Daeong is. This rope is tied very carefully. The more you move it, the tighter it becomes. 
When the rope is tight enough, it will break your tendons and tendons, and you won't be able to stand up. Xiaomu, you are really malicious. I won't let you go. You call me malicious, I'm just treating others lives in their own way. When you conspired with Lu Jibing to sell me to Hu Deong, why didn't you think carefully about your future fate? After speaking, Xiaomu didn't give Li Guixiang another chance to curse. She directly blocked Li Guixiang's mouth with a rag, closed the door, and took Sun Yonghong to Li Guixiang's room. Sun Yonghong always felt that this approach was not appropriate. She had been accustomed to the sparring between Li Guixiang and Lady Xia for so many years and had never had the idea of resisting. Xiaoyu, will this not be good? What will your aunt do to retaliate against us in the future? Xiaomuyu comforted her mother, Mom, don't worry, troops for the enemy, birth for floods, and I will protect you from being bullied by them. Sun Yonghong's eyes moistened. For the first time in so many years, when she saw her daughter speak for her, she felt that her daughter had changed, and it was hard to say where she had changed. The next morning, Xiaomuyu took Sun Yonghong to the town market to buy some daily necessities. The original owner's life was too poor, with no toiletries or anything else, and most importantly, he had to buy some books. For a woman in the new era, eating and drinking can be difficult, but not having a phone is very painful. In this era, without a phone, we can only replace it with a book. Walking to the edge of the small river at the village head, the river water is clear and bottomless, with no trace of pollution. The pebbles and water plants at the bottom of the river shine brightly in the sunlight, which is extremely beautiful. Xiaomuyu couldn't help but take a handful of water and drink it. It was sweet, cool, and very comfortable. In this cold winter and twelfth month, the water was so warm that it made Xiaomuyu very satisfied. As soon as she left the village, Xiaomuyu heard someone calling for help, help, who will save my rhubarb. The person shouting was crying heart and soul wrenching. Upon hearing the sound, Xiaomuyu and Sun Yonghong rushed over and saw a child in the village holding a dying yellow dog crying. Isn't that Xiaoyan from our village? Why did she come here? Sun Yonghong saw at a glance that this was Zhang Xiaohua's little swallow. Xiaoyan, what happened? Xiaomuyu approached and asked. Xiaoyan looked up and saw that it was Xiaomuyu. The older sister she had only seen yesterday suddenly cried even louder with grievances. She has been begging for help here for half an hour now, and no one has heard her. Now that she sees someone she knows, her nervous system suddenly relaxes and she cries even harder. Sister Xiaoyu, my big yellow dog seems to be dying soon. Please help it quickly. Xiaoyan, with a pleading tone, begged Xiaomuyu to save the big yellow dog. Xiaomuyu saw the yellow dog lying limp on the ground, foaming at the mouth and convulsing slightly, indicating signs of poisoning. How did it get like this? Xiaoyan sniffled and said, In the morning, I was playing outside with rhubarb. We ran and came to this place. I saw a very beautiful little mushroom on the ground and wanted to pick it, but it was caught off guard by the rhubarb who ate it. Then the rhubarb became what it is now. But in both past and present lives, Xia Muyu has never learned medical skills, let alone how to treat dogs. Xia Muyu comforted and said, Xiaoyan, sister doesn't know how to treat dogs. All right, sister can help you keep an eye on your dogs and let Aunt Sun take you home to find your parents, okay? When Xiaoyan heard that she was going to find her parents, she immediately became excited and said, No, don't look for my parents. They will kill rhubarb and eat dog meat. Sister, please don't tell my family. Sister Xiaoyu, you must help me save the rhubarb. The rhubarb was poisoned to prevent me from eating that poisonous mushroom. I don't want the rhubarb to die. As long as you save the rhubarb, I am willing to do anything for you. Looking at Xiaoyan's frightened expression, Xiaomuyu remembered a little flower dog she had raised when she was a child, which was very well behaved and sensible. An accident occurred and the dog's leg was crushed. No matter how Xiaomuyu begged her uncle and aunt to help save the little flower dog, it was of no use. 
In the end, I could only watch as my uncle took the little flower dog to the dog dealer to kill and skin it, and it turned into a bowl of soup on the dinner table. Xia Muyu was too aware of the desperate feeling at the time and immediately decided to help Xiaoyan herself. Xiaoyan, do you know where there is a place to treat dogs? There are definitely no pet shops in this era, but Xia Muyu still wants to ask first. Xiaoyan said disappointedly, no, but sister Xiaoyu, in the past when my pig got sick, my parents would go to the town to see Dr. Zhou, the veterinarian. Xiaomuyu thought for a moment and realized that there was still an hour's walk from the town. It will take at least two hours to bring the veterinarian over. The rhubarb dog looks in such poor condition that it may not last that long. Looking at Xiaoyan's sad expression, Xiaomuyu couldn't bear to let the child continue to feel sad. I can only say, sister will do her best to help you save rhubarb. Trying to hug the big yellow dog, but the big yellow dog is already an adult dog. Although very thin, it is not small in size and cannot be carried at all. Xia Muyu was at a loss and stroked the head of Da Huang. At this moment, Xia Muyu saw her palm slowly turning red. Startled, Xia Muyu quickly pressed her wrist. She thought she was also poisoned and needed to prevent the poison from entering her body. As Xia Muyu's palm turned red, a droplet of milk like liquid slowly condensed in the palm, emitting a rich aroma of honey. The condensation speed was very fast, and neither Xiaoyan nor Sun Yonghong noticed it. At this moment, Rhubarb suddenly woke up and licked Xiaomuyu's hand fiercely, causing Xiaomuyu to be startled. Rhubarb licked the liquid from Xiaomuyu's hand and struggled to stand up, swaying and swaying, as if drunk. Without walking twice, the rhubarb stood firm and quickly turned to face Xiaoyan, licking and rubbing. Xiaoyan exclaimed excitedly, Sister Xiaoyu, you have cured Da Huang. Sister Xiaoyu, Da Huang is cured. Looking at the lively and lively appearance of rhubarb, Xiaomuyu looked confused. What did she do? Is rhubarb so good? Did you just touch it and finish touching the rhubarb? Xiaomuyu felt unbelievable. Did you have some kind of divine power after being reborn? Just like the gods in foreign movies who like to touch the human head, a touch can eliminate all kinds of diseases. Xiaomuyu touched the withered grass on the ground again, and the withered grass remained unchanged. She also touched the withered tree next to her, and the tree remained unchanged. Quickly, Xia Muyu shook her head and realized that her thoughts were extremely absurd. Sun Yonghong became nervous when she saw Xia Muyu's series of strange movements. Xiaoyu, Xiaoyu, you haven't also been infected with the bacterial poison from rhubarb, have you? Xia Muyu's movements were like hallucinations produced by people who were infected with the bacterial poison. Sun Yonghong's question made Xia Muyu laugh and cry uncontrollably. Mom, don't worry, I'm fine. Let's go. Let's go to the market town quickly. She stood up and prepared to continue on her journey. Xiaoyan and Da Huang played for a while, and seeing that Da Huang was fine, they quickly ran to Xiaomuyu's side. Thank you, Sister Xiaoyu. Thank you for helping me save the rhubarb. Is there anything you need Xiaoyan's help with? Xiaoyan can do laundry, cooking, picking up firewood, and feeding pigs. Xia Muyu was moved by this sensible child. Xiao Yan, who is only six or seven years old, is already so capable. I want to become a teacher in the future and take good care of this child, striving to help her out of this remote small village. Xia Muyu squatted down and looked into Xiao Yan's eyes, saying, Sister, you don't need Xiao Yan to repay anything. Sister, as long as Xiao Yan can be happy with the Huang Go every day. After speaking, he touched Xiao Yan's head and continued on his journey. Due to the delay in time just now, it was a bit late to rush to the market town. Xiao Muyu and Sun Yonghong quickened their pace. Chapter 8 Someone Tracks You You are listening at NovelFull.audio Arriving at the market town, Xia Muyu's imprint on this era became even more profound. The market was bustling with people, 
without any bowing heads or peculiar costumes. Everyone looks thin, dressed simply, and many even have patches on their bodies, but their faces are full of energy. On the market, there are grains and pots and pans, with a majority of crops. Snacks made from grains also look very natural. Xiaomiu thought that in a few decades, these natural ingredients would only be available on the most expensive organic shelves in supermarkets, and couldn't help but marvel at the rapid changes of the times. If one could make a difference in this era, it wouldn't be in vain to travel back and forth. With this in mind, Xiaomiu walked into a supply and marketing cooperative, bought soap, towels, wash basins, and other toiletries, and even brought a box of snow cream to her mother Sun Yonghong. Sun Yonghong looks like a person who works all the year round. She is in her thirties, and looks older than a woman in her fifties. Xiaomiu can't help but feel a little distressed for her. In Xiaomiu's impression, the original owner didn't really like this mother. This mother has no status in her husband's family and is often scolded by the Xia family. She is also often belittled due to the poor family composition of her mother's family. So the original owner also didn't look up to his mother very much. The original owner's brainless ideas made Xia Muyu despise them. In Xia Muyu's previous life, she did not feel family affection. In this life, she only wants to cherish family affection twice, so she is determined to be good to Sun Yonghong. Sun Yonghong felt that the snow cream was too expensive and unnecessary, and refused Xiaomiu's kindness. Xiaomiu didn't say anything, picked up the cream and went to pay the bill. Sun Yonghong had no choice but to play around with her daughter. Then the two women went to the meat shop to buy three pounds of pork ribs and five pounds of meat. After crossing over, Xiaomiu clearly felt that her body strength was very weak, and she felt very weak after walking a few steps. It is clearly caused by long-term malnutrition, she needs to take good supplements. Then Xiaomiu took Sun Yonghong to the bookstore to buy some books and come back. At this time, the bookstore was not as spacious and bright as later generations, and there were not as many types of books. The junk books of later generations cannot be found in this bookstore. They are all high-quality domestic and foreign classics, as well as various poems and literary works. Xiaomiu was very happy. After reading these books, she felt that her eyes had been purified. When it comes to future bookstores, the most eye-catching ones are various anxiety-inducing internet celebrity bestsellers with diverse covers and bland content, which gives me a headache. Sun Yonghong doesn't know when her daughter has become so fond of learning, and she is completely different from the little girl who used to love playing truant. Xiaomiu eagerly selected the books she liked. Just then someone passed by her and touched her arm. As soon as she turned around, the person was nowhere to be seen. There was an extra note on the bookshelf next to her. Xiaomiu picked it up and opened it, saying, Someone is following you. We'll go out in ten minutes. Xiaomiu nervously looked towards the direction where the person had left. I saw a tall man over 1.8 meters tall, wearing a black windbreaker and a black hat, hurriedly leaving the door. Xiaomiu nervously looked around, and there was no one else in the bookstore except for the owner, her mother, and herself. It was only then that Xiaomiu's heart, which was hanging, finally came to rest. At this moment, a man wearing a white shirt paired with suit pants walked in. As soon as the man entered, the bookstore owner warmly welcomed him and said, Teacher he, it's been a long time no see. Where have you been lately? It's been a long time since you came to visit my small shop. The boss smiled brightly and finally waited for this big client. Teacher he, is it teacher he who supports teaching in our village? Xiaomiu followed the sound and looked over. Sure enough, it was Teacher He, still with such a graceful demeanor, wearing golden glasses, exuding the demeanor of a scholar. Teacher He briefly chatted with the boss and then went into the bookstore to pick up books. Sun Yonghong was a bit overjoyed to see Teacher He. His reputation in the village was so good that almost everyone admired him. After receiving a positive answer, 
Sun Yonghong was very happy and continued to ask, May I ask, who is your teacher? It depends on the arrangement above, I can't be the main one. Teacher he smiled politely and walked straight towards Xiaomuyu. You're also from Xiaojia village, right? Xiaomuyu was a bit surprised when teacher he took the initiative to talk to her. She replied softly, hmm. Teacher he didn't mind either. He picked up the book that Xiaomuyu was reading and flipped through it. Do you also love reading this book? Xiaomuyu took a foreign classic, which was all in English and was the original version that Xiaomuyu had been searching for 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 a long time. In later generations, most books are translated, and it is not easy to find the original version in a regular bookstore. When Xiaomuyu saw the original version, she showed an expression similar to seeing a hit love letter. Well, it's okay. Xiaomuyu didn't say much. In this era, there are very few people who can understand English, and Xiaomuyu didn't want to explain too much. I happen to have some books at the village primary school that are inconvenient to take away. Could you please store them with me for now? Seeing Xiaomuyu hesitating, teacher he quickly said, I won't let it go for free. After a while, when it's convenient for me, I'll go and retrieve the book. During this period, you can read the book that was left at your place as you please. As he spoke, teacher he's face was filled with a soft smile, accompanied by a faint woody fragrance like a gentle breeze and rain. Xiaomuyu's super beauty control was instantly convinced by teacher he and agreed. Let's go back to the village together later. Xiaomuyu originally wanted to refuse, after all, she had just divorced and went back to the village with another man, which was not good to be seen by others. But thinking of what was written on the note just now, someone was tracking me, so I thought it would be safer to follow teacher he. About ten minutes had passed since speaking, and Xiaomuyu followed teacher he out of the door. On the way home, Xiaomuyu remained vigilant and occasionally looked around and behind her. Teacher he was amused by her and said, what are you looking at? No, it's nothing. Xiaomuyu didn't tell teacher he about the note, afraid of causing unnecessary panic to teacher he and Sun Yonghong. My name is He Jiaza, and you. Teacher he chatted aimlessly, trying to relieve Xiaomuyu's nervous tension. Xiaomuyu heard the full name of teacher he for the first time, which was obviously different from the names of Li Taizhu, Huang Laoba, and others in the village. She thought this name sounded very nice. My name is Xiaomuyu. Who is skilled in drying and dyeing, combing smoke and bathing in the rain. It's such a beautiful name, he Jiaza briefly commented. Xiaomuyu is very fortunate that she was born in this era and still has such a beautiful name. Mom, do you know who named me? Xiaomuyu turned to ask Sun Yonghong. It was taken by an old gentleman who came to our village for temporary residence back then. When you were born, that old gentleman had just been in our village for a year. When I was walking around the village holding you, the old man saw you and said he had a good eye connection with you, so he named you this. Xiaomuyu became curious about this old gentleman. Do you know the name of this old gentleman? He Jiaza asked thoughtfully. I really don't know about this. I haven't heard anyone call him by his full name, but it seems that some elders in the village have called him Mr. Yi. Mr. Yi. He Jiaza's pupils contracted for a moment, is that him? He Jiaza's face was complex. Xiaomuyu saw it and quickly asked, what's wrong? Are you feeling unwell? No, no. Maybe I'm a bit tired from walking. Xiaomuyu is a bit speechless. As expected, she is a scholar, and this journey is tiring. Young people really don't pay attention to exercising. Think about yourself in the future, in order to maintain work energy, it is necessary to exercise for at least 2 hours every day in order to maintain uninterrupted live streaming for 10 hours with full vitality. Thinking of this, Xiaomuyu thought about putting her exercise plan on the agenda. No one followed along the way, nor did they encounter any suspicious people. As they walked to the village, Xiaomuyu's heart, which was hanging, finally fell. As soon as I entered the village, someone with sharp eyes saw it. 
Aunt John ran excitedly and shouted loudly to everyone, Teacher he is back, everyone, look. Teacher he is back. In almost an instant, Hijaza was surrounded by parents and children. Okay, hello everyone. Hijaza was at a loss from this battle. He remembers when he first came to the village to teach, there was no response from the villagers, and even most parents did not send their children to school. The current scene has greatly impressed Hijaza. Teacher He, are you coming back to teach? Teacher He, if you come back this time, don't you leave. Teacher He, if you encounter any difficulties in the future, just let everyone know. We just want you to stay. Teacher He, please don't leave, okay? Hijaza originally wanted to come back and pack some things before leaving, but now seeing the enthusiastic expressions of the villagers is a bit unbearable. Thinking of Mr. Yi mentioned by Xia Muyu's mother just now, she decided to send a telegram to explain the situation later and strive to stay in Xiajia village to teach. Thank you for your enthusiasm. It's not up to me to decide whether to stay or not, but I'll try my best to stay with the above application. Thank you all for your support in my work. Hijaza had already blushed a bit due to the enthusiasm of the villagers. After dealing with these enthusiastic villagers, Hijaza took Xiaomuyu to school. Although he may come back to work soon, it's okay to lend the book to Xiaomuyu to read for a while. The so dot called school is actually a house composed of three bungalows. In order to prevent children of too young school age from running around, a fence was set up around them. Two of the three rooms are classrooms, one is both a teaching aids and equipment room, a library, and a teacher's lounge. Xiaomiu walked into this room and saw that although there were many things, they were not chaotic. All kinds of items are neatly arranged, with one line for books, one line for equipment, and a square bed blanket, just like the standard of living in a military camp. Xiaomiu tentatively asked, Teacher he used to be a soldier. Hijaza smiled and said, No, I just prefer cleanliness. Xiaomiu felt that Hijaza was not telling the truth and was hiding something, but it was not easy to ask further. After Hijaza brought a few books to Xiaomiu, he asked her to go home. Xiaomiu suddenly remembered that Li Guixiang was still tied up in the house by her. Who wouldn't know how to dress up in Chapter 9? You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. As soon as Xia Muyu arrived at her doorstep, she saw that the house was already crowded with people and all the neighbors had arrived. The small room seemed to be bursting with these people, and some neighbors didn't squeeze in, poking their heads and looking inside. Xia Muyu patted the outermost person's shoulder and asked, Aunt Zhang, what happened? At this moment, there was a sudden bang in the room, the sound of something hitting the ground, which scared a child who was watching. Sun Yonghong, you are a bad woman. Look at what kind of good girl you have raised. Mrs. Xia's voice was full of vitality, with a strong anger. Sun Yonghong remained silent, and Xia Muyu quickly squeezed through the crowd and headed towards the house. I saw old lady Xia sitting on a mottled grand tutor's chair like an old Buddha, looking like a judge. Li Guixiang stood next to lady Xia, holding her waist with her hand, looking very painful. Sun Yonghong is standing in the middle of the room being judged by two people. Mom, what happened? Xiaomiu asked as she entered. Sun Yonghong saw that Xiaomiu had returned and quickly waved her hand, Mom, it's okay, you go out quickly. Do you still want to leave after coming back? Mrs. Xia said sternly. You're such a cowardly thing, come in here for me. Xiaomiu looked around and pretended to be puzzled, asking, Grandma, who are you calling? That's you. Old lady Xia pointed at Xiaomiu, trembling with anger. Seeing that Xiaomiu didn't move and still showed a provocative gaze, Li Guixiang didn't care to prop up her waist and went to collect Xiaomiu's clothes. You deserve to be punished, didn't you hear Grandma call you? Xiaomiu stumbled and almost fell, looking weak and helpless. Fortunately, I was supported by Sun Yonghong. Mom asked you to leave, why haven't you left yet? 
Xiaomuyu clenched Sun Yonghong's hand to signal her peace of mind. Xiaomuyu, why don't you kneel down for me? Look at how you've tortured your sister. In. Law. Kneeling down, isn't the Qing dynasty long gone? Xiaomuyu thought to herself. This summer, the old lady is used to being domineering at home every day. The original owner was a steamed bun, and she was left to her grandmother's control until she finally buried herself. Starting over again, how could such villains continue to show off their power? Grandma, are you going to die or not? Do you want me to kneel down and kowtow to you? As soon as Xia Muyu said these words, the onlookers were immediately dumbfounded. How could a younger generation talk to an elder like this? Xia Muyu really has no manners. Xia Lao Tai was humiliated in public for the first time at such an old age, which made her feel a bit embarrassed. Suddenly, she didn't know what to give the next order. In the past, whenever she exerted her power, everyone in her family would say that they dared not turn west. Why is Xiaomuyu talking to elders like this? Did the person who won the game yesterday drift away? The neighbors whispered. Xiaomuyu. You're so brave. You tied up your aunt at home all night, and now you dare to confront me. Xiaomuyu said wrongly, how could it be? I don't have the strength to bind my aunt. Don't slander anyone. Summer rain. Do you dare to do it or not? Li Guixiang didn't expect Xiaomuyu to publicly deny it, pointing at Xiaomuyu's nose and cursing. Madame Xia lifted Li Guixiang's wrist and showed it to the crowd, neighbors, look, this is evidence of my unfilial granddaughter binding Li Guixiang. The crowd further gathered around, and indeed there were some strangulation marks on Li Guixiang's wrist. This summer, Mu Yu has turned the tide and dared to do this to her aunt. This violent incident seems to have to be resolved by the village chief. Zhao Changhai angrily said in the crowd that he had always had an ambiguous relationship with Li Guixiang in private. Even if I invited the village chief, I didn't do this, Xia Muyu said with a calm expression Xia Muyu thought to herself that calling the village chief was just in line with her wishes, and it would be great if the matter could be resolved in one go. As several people were arguing about who tied Li Guixiang, Xia Muyu remained silent and waited silently for the village chief's arrival. Not long after, village chief Xia Yuliang rushed over. He has always been a headache as the village chief. Today, this chicken, tomorrow, and that dog are all trivial matters that disturb him. What's the matter? Can you save dim sum every day? As soon as Xia Yuliang arrived, he grumbled and complained. He entrusted the village chief to his relatives who were officials in the county, and it took a lot of effort. As a result, I realized that being the village chief was not easy at all. It was said that being a clean official was difficult to handle household affairs. Although the village chief had limited authority, he was only responsible for helping people with household chores. If it weren't for putting in too much effort for this position at the time, it would have been a bit of a waste. If it weren't for it, it would have been very uneconomical. He would have abandoned the task long ago, and now it's hard to get off. As soon as the village chief arrived, Xia Muyu fell to the ground and said, Uncle Xia, you've come. If you don't come again, I'll be beaten to death. Speaking, Xia Muyu squeezed out a few tears and looked pitiful. The neighbors were confused by Xia Muyu's actions. Isn't it that Xia Muyu hit Li Guixiang? How did it become that Xia Muyu was hit? Xia Muyu, don't spit blood out. When did I hit you? It was clearly you who tied me up all night. Speaking, he also raised his wrist to show the village chief. Who hit who on earth? Xia Muyu, get up and talk first. Xia Muyu lay on the ground, looking weak. Xia Muyu pretended not to be able to get up, forcefully supporting her body with her arms. She fell to the ground twice, and Sun Yonghong quickly went to help her in pain. Why are you so badly injured? Are you really being beaten? The village chief also stepped forward to help support Xiaomuyu. 
Li Guixiang was excited and crossed her waist, shouting, she was so angry that she tied me up last night and tied me up until noon today. Yeah, Yu Liang, this dead girl is pretending. I haven't seen Li Guixiang this morning. I only found her in the summer rain room at noon. Li Guixiang was tightly tied to the ground, her mouth was also blocked, and she couldn't move. You said in this cold winter, if it freezes out, how can I explain it to Han Han's father? As she spoke, she wiped away her tears and said, Humph, you're the only girl who can cry. Who wouldn't cry anymore? Old Lady Xia wiped her tears and secretly observed the movements around her. Yeah, yes, Mrs. Xia was right. When we heard Mrs. Xia's voice, we rushed over and saw Li Guixiang lying on the ground with a rope beside her. Someone pointed to the rope on the ground while speaking. Xia Miyu coughed fiercely and also retched a few times, looking like she was about to cough up. What's wrong with Xiaoyu? Xiaoyu, are you okay? Sun Yonghong quickly supported Xia Miyu, who was on the verge of collapse. Auntie, do you think I'm someone with the strength to tie you up? Xia Miyu said weakly. Even though you were fine just now, you're really pretending. Zhao Changhai, who had just gone to call the village chief, spoke again. Uncle Xia didn't come just now. I know you wouldn't believe it even if I told you. I've been waiting for Uncle Xia to come. Uncle Xia, you have always been the most fair and just village chief in my opinion. You have to make the decision for me. Being praised by Xia Muyu, Xia Yuliang felt a bit ethereal. Doing mass work so many times, no matter how hard he tries, it always makes some people feel dissatisfied. And those who benefited from it, no one praised him so much, they all felt that these things were what he, the village chief, should do. Don't worry, Xiao Yu. I'll handle this matter with you, Xia Yuliang assured, patting his chest. But everyone is not a fool either. It was indeed normal to see Xia Muyu return, unlike being beaten up. The crowd started whispering again. Who is telling the truth and who is telling the falsehood between the two of them? At this moment, Zhao Changhai spoke again, village chief, do you think the injury on Li Guixiang's wrist cannot be fake? Xia Muyu's weak appearance must have been faked. Uncle Zhao, why have you been helping my aunt talk? Do you have any thoughts about my aunt? Zhao Changhai and Li Guixiang didn't expect Xia Muyu to speak so bluntly, and they were both embarrassed and angry. Chapter 10 Scars That Are Startling You are listening at novelfull.audio. De Ko Loi Zara Trong Quatrin Lei Text